John. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, thank you all for being here today. Uh, we have many, uh, many of my colleagues in law enforcement are here today, and a lot of people from the public. Uh, I appreciate uh, everyone's attendance. And today, uh, the governor will be signing uh, House Bill 7095, which uh, we all know is about the highly publicized issue here in Florida regarding um, uh, pres prescription um, drug diversion or pill mills. Uh, I was talking to the governor a minute ago, and and uh, Interestingly enough, and it's, we happen to be here in the jail today, but about 30% of the inmates that are being booked into our jail right now are, are suffering from um, opiate withdrawal or in a state of detox, and it's a, a, quite a burden uh, on law enforcement right now, and, and of course, uh, prisons and jails across the state of Florida. As well, uh, as the governor started addressing uh, this issue, uh, we realized it was, um, it was not just a law enforcement issue. Uh, we do believe that uh, by arresting the right people, it will go a long way um, towards um, uh, relieving us of this problem. But at the same time, we also know that many regulatory things uh, had to occur um, for that to happen. And we had to address um, these health care profiteers who are making money off of uh, people in regarding the diversion of, of illegal drugs. So uh, with that, I'm going to... Uh, uh, introduce our governor who who has many uh, statistics about this and is very very uh, well versed in this um, subject so at this time it's my honor uh, to introduce the governor of the state of Florida Governor Rick Scott Thank you. Thank you. please have a seat the um, thank you very much sheriff for the um, for the uh, kind welcome the um, you know this this issue hits home uh, to a lot of people and uh, uh, Lisa Mishad is, is up here. I, I've known the Mishad uh, for a long time, and they lost a daughter, now what, two months? Almost three, three, Almost three months ago. Um, Brandy at, uh, at 18, and I knew Brandy when she was probably, what, six or five or something like that. So it, uh, it's, this issue it ha is impacting our, um, our state like you cannot believe, and impacting our, con our country. So, uh, first off, thanks everybody for being here today. Uh, this is the second of three stops uh, I'm making across the state today uh, for the signing of this bill to crack down on the illegal abuse of prescription drugs. I am proud to be joined by state legislators, state and local law enforcement partners, state's attorneys, medical examiners, and many other concerned advocates and citizens. This is a very important piece of legislation, one that I believe will save lives across our state and across our country. Back in March, in response to the pill mill epidemic in our state, I announced a comprehensive plan to tackle this issue at the source and reverse the growing threat of illegal pill mills and the high volume of distribution of dangerous, highly addictive prescription drugs. Florida has an alarming seven deaths a day due to drug over overdose, seven deaths a day. For, and, it's, and it's all across the state. Florida has absolutely become the pill mill capital of the nation. But today marks the beginning of end of that dubious title. With the highest volume of oxycodone dispensers dealing here in our state, we have become a hotbed for illegal drug trafficking. I've gotten calls from governors all across, especially the uh, east of Mississippi, about how many of their residents come down here uh, to get uh, these, uh, these drugs illegal. 98 of the nation's top 100 oxycodone purchasing positions are in the state of Florida. 98 of the top 100. The first step to reverse these unacceptable, unacceptable statistics was started earlier this spring. First, working with Attorney General Pam Bondi, and I know Pam is from this area, but she is doing a wonderful job. Uh, Florida Department of Law Enforcement Commissioner Jerry Bailey, state and local law enforcement and state prosecutors, I created a statewide drug strike force to provide an immediate response to criminal drug trafficking, including prescription drugs in Florida. The statewide strike force under the coordination of the FDLE works with seven regional strike force teams, each led by a police chief and a sheriff. These strike force teams are systematically targeting and dismantling the major supply points for these illegally prescribed and dispensed drugs in our state. Since initiated in March, the strike force teams have made 350 arrests and seized thousands of dangerous prescription drugs. The Tampa strike force team led by Hillsborough Sheriff David G and St. Petersburg, Petersburg Police Chief Chuck Harmon has made approximately 40 arrests since March, and I'm sure that number is below 
what you, what you would say today. These arrests include joint operation by the Tampa and Fort Myers Strike Force teams to arrest a physician and her manage, office manager in Lee County who operated pill mills in both Fort Myers and Pinellas County and were ultimately charged with racketeering, conspiracy to traffic and opiate and money laundering. Thank you to all of the men and women who make up these strike force teams to take these criminals off our streets to protect our citizens, our families, and our children. Second, I worked with Attorney General Bondi and state legislative leaders to develop comprehensive legislation to close the loopholes that have allowed the Ill illegitimate doctors and pharmacies to overprescribe and dispense these dangerous drugs, often, often under the guise of a law lawful pain clinic. The product of this collaboration with Attorney General Bondi and legislators is House Bill 7095, which I'm proud to sign into law today. Specifically, the legis legislation increases penalties for overprescribing, over bans doctors from dispensing these controlled drugs except under specific circumstances, including surgery, participation in a drug clinical trial, and participation with a hospice center, provides the de declaration of a public health emergency which triggers a mandatory buyback program for doctors to return controlled substances back to distributors and requires the tracking of wholesale distribution of these drugs. Think about it, these, these are legal drugs. We should be able to track, we should be able, we can follow this from the manufacturer to the distributor to the physician. Ensures the protection of data by requiring all staff that have access to the data undergo a comprehensive criminal background check. This bill also provides $3 million to support the continued efforts of state and local law enforcement and state prosecution of these illegal activities. All this has to be done locally. It's, it, it's your sheriffs, it's your police chiefs that are doing this. I want to particularly thank Representative Rob Shank for sponsoring this outstanding bill. And let me tell you, Representative Shank focused, uh, focused on this bill, made sure we had the right bill. Uh, when people tried to change it to, uh, to water it down, he stopped that from happening. And he also did a great job with, uh, with Medicaid reform this year. I also want to take this opportunity again to thank not only our strike force co-chairs, but also all the participants of the strike teams and the prosecution arm for their efforts in bringing justice to this issue and for ensuring the protection of our communities and especially our children. I'm confident, you know, I have daughters 26 and 28 and you just, you just think about uh, if what could have happened to them if, if, if uh, they'd ever uh, gotten uh, involved in something like this. I am confident that with the efforts of our law enforcement strike teams, our state prosecutors, and Attorney General Bondi, and this legislation signed into law today, Florida will shed its title as the Oxy Express. Now I'd like to introduce uh, Representative Shank, who's going to uh, speak about this bill for a second. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. Thank you. Uh, Sheriff G. Sheriff Coates, all of our partners in law enforcement, thank you for having us today. Thank you uh, for your partnership in this effort. I have to admit, when I was first charged months ago with trying to tackle this issue, I was new to it. It, uh, it had not affected me or any of my family members. So in doing research, the, f the first thing I looked for is well, why, hadn't, why have past efforts failed? What was causing the problem? And uh, the governor did a good job of sharing with all of us today a lot of the problems. But the numbers, numbers don't lie. And of all the doctors that dispense oxycodone in the United States, 85% of all that oxycodone comes from Florida. That is a damning statistic that we should all be embarrassed about. And it became clear that we had to take a holistic approach to solving this problem. And so the first thing we did was we said, well, you know what, we have to shrink the supply. We have to make these drugs harder to get. We have to, the legitimate patients that need it should be able to get it, but everybody else should not. So now doctors will no longer be able to dispense these medications. And to those doctors who want to make a quick buck on prescribing over and over again, we are now tracking their prescriptions. We are now tracking, as the governor mentioned, where these drugs go. So that if there's a spike, we can, we can turn it over into our partners in law enforcement. They can look at it, research it, and go get the bad guys. But really, the untold story, which nobody talks about, is why, why has it taken so long to fight this scourge on our society to defend those seven deaths a day? And the, the simple matter is this. There are tens of millions of dollars involved in these bad behaviors. People are making millions and millions of dollars off of killing our kids, our grandmothers, and our parents. And so when it became clear what we had to do, I want to commend, first of all, Attorney General Pam Bondi, who is very passionate about this issue. The governor as well. You know, uh, the governor and I talked months and months ago. And when we decided to go down this path, along with House Speaker Dean Cannon, we knew it wasn't going to be popular. We knew the special interests were going to come after us because we were hitting people in their pocketbooks. 
but we were able to, to stand strong because of the speaker and because of the governor knew that we had to save lives, and that's what this bill does. It saves lives, and so with that, I thank, again, law enforcement, governor, for your leadership on this issue, and uh, today, governor, I think it's time we start saving some of these lives, and uh, far to go from being the easiest state in the nation to get these to the hardest, and with your signature, we're going to do that, and thank you so much. We thank everyone, and I think the governor has some availability to the media in a few minutes, and uh, thank you very much.